Welcome, listeners, to the inaugural episode of The Blues Legacy, Foundations of Modern Music. I'm your host, Liam J. Holland, and we're about to embark on a rich journey diving deep into the world of blues, the genre that laid the foundation for many contemporary music forms we enjoy today. Today's episode is titled From the Roots, The Birth and Origins of Blues Music. Here, we'll traverse time, retracing the roots of the blues, its emergence, and its profound connection to African-American history. We'll delve into the social and cultural conditions that gave birth to this potent form of musical expression, unearthing the influences of African rhythms, work songs, field hollers, and spirituals. So buckle up as we take this auditory journey back in time to where it all began. Let's dive in. As we start our exploration into the birth of blues, it's essential to understand the historical backdrop against which this genre emerged. Blues music, a uniquely American sound, was born out of the African-American experience, an experience deeply entrenched in the harsh realities of slavery and segregation. When the bluebird began to sing you can hear those hammers a mile or more. You can hear John Henry hammering. Oh, Lord, it's hear John Henry hammering. Originating in the Deep South, the blues was shaped significantly by African musical traditions, carried over by enslaved Africans forced onto American shores. These influences manifest vividly in the blues's rhythmical structures, a rich tapestry woven with threads of traditional African polyrhythms. What's remarkable about blues is its ability to retain and communicate the emotional intensity and tonal nuances of these African roots. Listeners can discern the use of blue notes, the bent pitches that convey a world of feeling, a sonic characteristic traced back to African vocal techniques. And so, in the crucible of cultural exchange, struggle and resilience, the blues began to take shape. It emerged as a voice for the voiceless, a potent form of expression and resistance. We're about to delve deeper into these roots, examining how the pain, the hope, the humanity echoed in the blues gave birth to a genre that resonates universally. Blues music was not born in a vacuum. Its roots are grounded in the fertile soil of cultural and social conditions that affected African American life in the southern United States. Let's begin by looking at the musical precursors to the blues, which included field hollers, work songs, and spirituals. Field hollers were call and response songs used by enslaved people working in the fields. They served as a form of communication, a way to ease the burden of work, and a vehicle for covert resistance. Work songs, on the other hand, were rhythmic tunes that helped pace labor, making tasks more bearable. Lastly, spirituals were deeply emotive songs born out of faith and the longing for freedom, often filled with biblical allusions and double entendres. The convergence of these forms, influenced by African rhythms and musical structures, was instrumental in the evolution of the blues genre. As you listen to Poe Lazarus, you can hear the call and response pattern, the work rhythm, the emotional weight, all key elements that later crystallize in blues music. The blues took these raw, heartfelt expressions and gave them a new musical language, one 
that was destined to reverberate beyond the fields, churches, and juke joints, and onto the global stage. Well, they take and pull out of the little morning commissary. Gary, is there my wounded Lord? Lord, my wounded As the blues began to coalesce as a distinct genre. It developed unique musical and lyrical characteristics that set it apart. At the heart of the blues is a raw emotional honesty that speaks of hard times, heartache, and the human condition. A theme so universal it transcends time and place. Musically, the blues is defined by its distinct harmonic structure, typically a 12 bar three-line pattern, often with an AAB rhythm scheme. It is characterized by the use of blue notes, notes sung or played at a lower pitch for expressive purposes. These microtonal bends, often found on the third, fifth, and seventh notes of the scale, give the blues its distinctive melancholic sound. Improvisation plays a significant role in the blues, reflecting the genre's roots in African musical traditions where individual expression within a communal context was valued. Blues music also adopted the call and response pattern found in African music and work songs where a leader would sing or play a line and the rest of the group would respond. To get a sense of these characteristics, let's listen to a snippet of Long John by Lightning Washington. Pay attention to the 12 bar structure, the blue notes, and the interplay between the lead and the group. Well, now I'm in the pit. Well, now I'm in the pit. And I can't get out. And I can't get out. It's long gone. I'm long gone. It's long gone. What's wrong? Blues music was born in a social and cultural crucible of hardship, and it's impossible to separate its emergence from the harsh realities faced by African Americans at the time. Slavery, segregation, and the struggles of life in the South left an indelible imprint on the genre. The horrors of slavery are encoded in the blues, both implicitly and explicitly. The music became a way for African Americans to express their pain, sorrow, and longing for freedom. Themes such as lost love, economic hardship, imprisonment, and migration became staples of blues lyrics, a reflection of the lived experiences of those who created and performed the music. The Great Migration, a mass movement of African Americans from the rural South to the industrial North, also had a profound impact on the blues. It brought the blues into new urban environments, setting the stage for the genre's evolution into new forms, like Chicago blues, which we'll explore in a later episode. 
For an example on how these social and cultural factors influence blues music, let's now listen to a snippet from Go Down Old Hannah. It's a traditional work song, and it reflects themes of hardship and suffering common in early blues. Let's listen. Well, my partner looked around. Well, well, well. This is what he said. This is what he said. Well, my partner looked around. Well, this is what he said. Well, I'm sorry, man. Well, well, well. They done drove me down. They done drove me down. As we wrap up our first dive into the world of blues, we've taken a look at how this deeply expressive and influential genre came to be. Stemming from the African rhythms and musical traditions brought to America, blossoming in the hardships of slavery, segregation, and the Deep South. The field hollers, work songs, and spirituals of enslaved people laid the groundwork for what would become a musical revolution. Key characteristics like call and response patterns, improvisation, and the distinctive blue notes began to define the genre, with pioneers like Charlie Patton and Ma Rainey leading the charge and turning their personal experience and the trials of their community into profoundly powerful music. In the background now, you can hear the strains of Ma Rainey's C.C. Rider, a classic blues number that epitomizes the emotion and power that blues brought into the world of music. But we've only just scratched the surface. As we move forward, we'll continue our journey through the evolution of blues, exploring how this genre rooted in African-American history, has left its mark on almost every facet of modern music. Next time, we'll be stepping into the heart of the Mississippi Delta, the birthplace of a raw, poignant style known as Delta Blues. We'll meet pioneers and understand how their music echoed through the ages, laying the groundwork for artists and genres far beyond their time. Before I close out today's episode, I'd like to thank all of you for joining me on this journey into the heart of the blues. Your support means the world, and I'm beyond excited to explore this rich musical heritage with you. The music you've heard today includes authentic recordings from blues pioneers like Charlie Patton and Ma Rainey. The Strains of Pony Blues you're hearing now is one of the masterpieces by Patton, who we'll meet more closely in the coming episodes. If you enjoyed today's episode, consider subscribing wherever you listen to podcasts and sharing the Blues Legacy Foundations of Modern Music with your friends and fellow music lovers. Your shares, comments and likes go a long way in helping others discover this show. And for those of you who want to go above and beyond in supporting the show, consider becoming a patron through Patreon or supporting the show via coffee. These contributions help ensure that I can keep bringing you more in-depth explorations into the rich tapestry of blues music and its impact on the world. There are links in the description of this episode. Stay tuned for the next episode where we'll dive into the depths of Delta Blues. Until then, keep the blues playing and remember, the music we love today wouldn't be the same without the legacy of the blues. When I get out, yeah I don't want to marry Just want to be your man